how precious is the name of Jesus. The more I call him, the better I feel. The more you call him, the more devils tremble. The more you call him, the more he showers down his blessings upon his people. Somebody just say his name. See, I didn't have to tell you whose name to say because there is no name that is higher than the name of Jesus. Amen. Thank you, choir. Thank you, choir. How precious is the name of Jesus. We just thank God on this Mother's Day for being able to be here, but more than that, it's the Lord's Day. And this is the day he's made, and we shall rejoice and be glad in it. I want to turn your attention to 1 Samuel, the first chapter. Thank you, praise team, for singing to the glory of God, just the way I taught you. Amen, amen. We just thank God and congratulations, uh, Sister Sutton, on that great position. And the Lord is continuing to elevate and still do wonderful things. Amen, amen. So we thank God for assistant director to director, amen, and God just knows what he's doing. Be happy for everybody, whatever situation you find yourselves in. Applaud people, celebrate people, admonish people, tell them how great the Lord is because if he's blessing your neighbor, guess what? He's in the neighborhood, so that's what you have to understand that. And he's, uh, while on others thou art calling, do not pass me by amen he just the reason you ain't got your breakthrough yet he's held up at your neighbor's house getting them broke through and he'll be ready with you in just a moment you just gotta wait your season amen first samuel one is what we find our assignment and again happy mother's day to all especially my wife and to my mother and mother-in-law and to all of these mothers we thank god for you first samuel one and I'm going to read just two verses, 9 and 10. Marie, verse 9 and 10, coming from the King James Version, verse 9 and 10. So Hannah rose up after they had eaten in Shiloh, and after they had drunk. Now Eli, the priest, sat upon the seat by the post of the temple of the Lord, and she was in bitterness of her soul and prayed unto the Lord and wept sore. I want to live for a subject, how do I get past this? How do I get past this? For some, you've got to understand, brother and sister Berrios, that people are able to look at this world and everything that's going on and think everything's okay. And I want to tell you that nine times out of 10, when you look at somebody, Things are not as going well as they portray on the outside as on the inside. That does not mean that you got to walk around faking stuff, but you've learned how to cope with it. Somebody asked me the other day, what's your pain level? I said three to four. They said, you ain't on meds. I said, until you see nine or ten, three to four uh, ain't nothing because you've learned how to live with the pain because you've learned how to adapt and overcome in situations for uh, the longer you go through it, the better you're able to tolerate it. I believe that's why Jesus said that faith worketh patience. So you, you will learn to go through some things. But Mother's Day can be difficult for a lot of people. Uh, some persons are saying, I can't say happy Mother's Day, it's just Mother's Day. Because maybe their mother is not here, or, or maybe they're estranged from their mother. Maybe they never knew their mother, or maybe even they, 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 the mother is alive, but they don't have a good relationship. So, so, so it can be a dangerous time. So, so while we are sensitive to that, we can still have Happy Mother's Day. We're still sensitive. Everybody ain't got the same situation. And for those who are uh, fortunate enough to be able to have their mother and be in relationship with them, it's uh, a wonderful thing to be able to celebrate not being boastful, but appreciation what you have. And the truth of the matter is, no matter what the situation, then June is coming up called Father's Day, and it's going to be the same thing. And we've got to be mindful of that because everybody sees it a different way. But on this Mother's Day, understand that everybody gets something in their life that they got to learn how to get past. It may seem like a strange, strange subject for Mother's Day, but I want to tell you something. While I've never been a mother, don't ever want to be one, and, and, and biologically impossible for me to be one, I understand this, that every mother on her way to motherhood or through motherhood, whether biologically or spiritually, has had to ask the question, Lord, how am I going to get through this? 
How am I going to make it through this situation? Because motherhood, Sister Yaden, does not just deal with those children. Motherhood brings on a most of faceted things of problems and decisions and, and prayer uh, things that you got to go through that is not listed in the book. I know you can read these books that come out now, and I'm not picking on y'all new mothers, but, but be careful about all these books you buy, how to be the best mother, how to be the number one mother. They are lying to you because they don't know they sell. Because understand, motherhood is parenthood. is trial and error. Sometimes you get it right, sometimes you don't. And some people don't understand something that all of us will go to a junction in our life. Whether your mother not saying, how do I get through this? And if you're not careful, if you're not careful, you'll go through pain and become bitter. And you got to be careful of that because understand, faith worketh patience, but it does not work bitterness. And when the spirit of the enemy gets inside of you, what happens is you will take that and allow that flesh to be able to manifest into something that you feel like you can't make it through your situation. You got to be careful because bitterness uh, visits everybody's house. And if you're not careful, you will invite bitterness in and allow it to live longer than it was supposed to be there. And the problem we get to understand this, that Hannah is going through the same thing. Hannah said that the Lord said, and she said, and, and, and she was bitter or had bitterness in her soul and prayed unto the Lord and wept sore. What she was trying to do is she was bitter because she was trying to get through a situation. Bitterness is not a popular subject for church folk, but let me tell you something, everybody in here has had to deal with that spirit before. Maybe it's somebody that did you wrong. Maybe you did yourself wrong. Maybe somebody passed you over. Maybe you messed up yourself or whatever it is, you've had bitterness and you've had to ask, Lord, how do I get past this? How many of you know I ain't talking about 75, 86, and 92? I'm talking about in the last year, I've had to be careful that bitterness did not creep up in my situation. You must understand something that Hannah finds herself in this situation. It does not say she's getting bitter. It says she's bitter. And let me tell you something. Just because you are not bitter right now, please don't look down your nose at Hannah or anybody else who gets bitter because you don't know what's coming your way. You don't know what things in life will hit you unexpectedly to cause you to the point where you become almost bitter. Say, Lord, how do I get past this? You must understand that number one, you've got to, that's got five points here. You've got to go through the persist, you got to go through persistence in prayer. You've got to have persistence in prayer. Persistence is not a one-time thing because notice what it said in, in verse 10, that Hannah started to pray. When she's praying, she's still bitter, but she's praying. Is there anybody in here who's been in a situation where you realize the spirit of the enemy came on you, but you still knew how to stretch your hand to God and say, God, I know I ain't supposed to be like I'm feeling right now, but God, if you take this thing away from me and help me get through past this situation, everything will work together for my good. Somebody say, I got to get past this. You can only do it through the persistence of prayer. Prayer is the first key to be able to unlock the door. There will come a time where you will be praying and you will con continue to pray and be persistent in prayer. Understand, Jesus taught of the ask and ye shall receive. Seek and ye shall find not and the door shall be open to you. And it sounds like a good plan for prayer. But let me tell you, in the Greek, in the New Testament, the words are, are, are called perpetual past tense which means that I'm not only praying one time, but I'm persistent in my prayer. And I know there's some people with a theology that say pray one time and be done with it. I don't believe or attest to that theology. I know that there's been some times where I'm trying to get past some stuff where I've had to go back to God every day and say, God, you got to help me with this thing. Shoot, there's been some times I had to go two, three, four, five times a day and put it at the altar. Is there anybody out there who's gone through some stuff that you were trying to get past that you prayed on Monday and heard? Heard nothing from God. You prayed on Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday, and you got to the point where you prayed 30 days, 60 days, 90 days, and nothing still happened. I wish I had some true witnesses up in here that know that some things that hit your spirit so much and grapple you in your mind that you say, Lord, I got to keep on praying. Is there anything that you've had to pray for over and over and over again? How many of y'all praying for some stuff right now that still has not came to manifestation? But when you woke up this morning, you said, I'm going to still bless the Lord, oh my soul, and all that's within me, bless his holy name. And don't ever think that you got to stop petitioning God, for the Bible tells us he is the reward of them that diligently seek him. 
diligently means sometimes I have to go multiple times to the Lord. And understand this, there's nothing wrong with that. The problem is, is when you don't have faith that God can work it out. Now, I want to tell you something, whatever situation you find yourself in that you are trying to get past, the reason you've got to call on the Lord and the reason you feel bitter, Brother Saunders, is because you've got to the point where you can't handle it yourself. And when you learn that you can't handle it yourself, how many of y'all ever had to uh, put, put, ever put your hand in it and had to get your hand back out of it? Because you understood something that God told you to leave it alone, but you put your hands back in it because you couldn't get past it. See, oftentimes we come to the point where the situation where we think is going to be over instantly. And we think the, 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 the situation, see, let me tell you something. Sometimes God won't change the situation, but he'll change you in the situation. That's a, that'll preach right there. Sometimes God won't change the situation, but he'll change you in the situation. How many of y'all have had to pray, Lord, let me get this madness off me. Let me get this meanness out of me. Let me get this cussing demon out of me. Oh, I'm sorry, I don't think I said cussing. You know some of y'all done slipped up sometime because some folk that made you lay your religion down and didn't want to pick it back up again. But let me tell you something, God will give you the fortitude to speak the word of God. You ain't got to cuss nobody out. You ain't got to tell nobody they number one. All you got to do is pray and pursue. And how many of y'all seen situations where you prayed hard and God started to move situations? He tried to change your mind to the point. The other day, uh, my wife was walking our dog. And as she was walking our dog, uh, he's a little dog. He's about five months old. But he got box and rock, so don't sleep on him because he will arise and uh, get you one day. So he's still a pup right now. And, and this German shepherd and this Labrador retriever look to be about five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten years old. And, and he's walking down the street doing like this. And the dog started barking at the deuce. Uh, our dog name is Deuce Bruno Thompson. He got a whole name. His, his name is Deuce Bruno Thompson. And he's walking like this with his tail in the air because we ain't clipped it yet. And he's walking his tail in there. The dog's going, rawr, 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 rawr. <laughs> He just keeps on walking. And my wife said, he didn't look at, when he looked over, he said, because guess what? He knew who was carrying him was not going to let those things get to him. See, sometimes when things are barking at you, you got to... You just got to keep your head in the, in the air. And how many of y'all know, sometimes the things that are on the periphery try to get me, but when I know that I know that I know that God is going to take me through this situation, it may be dark sometime, it may be rough sometime, but somebody say, I'm going to get past this. Yeah. Hannah is in a situation. Got to deal with the meat of the text. Hannah's got a problem. Hannah is distressed. She is in despair. But can I tell you? I think she's got a reason to be this way. Now, some of y'all said, Pastor, that's wrong. Let me tell you, you don't know nothing until you go through it. Watch what happens in the day. Hannah has bitterness in her soul. Number two, you've got to press, you've got to press through your painful predicament. You must understand, look at chapter one, verse two. Elkanah has these wives. This is polygamous time. This is not permissible now. You go to jail for it now. But there, he, he had two wives. Hannah and Penina. And see, uh, Hannah has no children, but Penina is a baby-making factory. She is pushing babies out every time. But Hannah has no children. And all Hannah wants is a male child. It's not only a biological, it's called, biologically, it says she's barren. Barren means I can't bring anything forth. But watch what happens uh, with this. She's not only got a biological problem, I'm going to uh, attest she has a theological problem. Because it's not only is she barren, it says, I think it's in verse 5, it says that the Lord did it to her. That's what the word of God says. It says, verse 5, the Lord shut up her womb. That's what the word says. What happens when you got a biological problem? You might can get that fixed. But what happens when you've got a theological problem that God allowed you to be in this situation? Now, I know some of y'all don't want to talk about that because you say, I ain't going to mess with the Lord, the Lord doing his work. How many of y'all found yourself in a situation that God put you in and you still say, God, why did you put me in this? Not to the point that you don't trust him, not to the point that you don't want to leave, but you got to know, God, why did you think I was a prime candidate to be here? Not that I want to move, not that I, I want you, but if you could have picked somebody else, why didn't you pick them? And see, let me tell you something. A lot of people look at your outside life and think they know everything that's going on and never know the pressure and the pain that you deal with because they see the accolades, but they never see the anguish in your life. Lord, have mercy. I just preach right there. 
See, she's not going to be biological, but you got a theological issue. And you understand something? The Lord did it to her. And why did God do it? What happens when you pray that there will be a move, but God doesn't move it? And he'll find a way to be able to let you go through it, but you don't want to go through it. What if God keeps you uh, up all night? And what if God keeps you praying on the floor late in the midnight hour, and yet nothing still happens? And the Lord calls her womb to be barren. This woman is not only barren, but she's also broken. She's broken because she has a desire to give her, her, her husband children, a male child, and she's not able to do it. So she gets to the point, and I know some of y'all say, that's all you got. Understand something, it's relative to your situation, what you need. People don't know what you need. What makes other folk happy don't make you happy. What excites them does not excite you. How many of you have grown enough in Christ that certain things don't excite you no more? Uh, material things don't even matter anymore. If I can have peace in my sleep, if I can have joy in my soul, if I can have serenity in my sanctuary, everything will be all right. Somebody say, he talking about me. You must understand that in this, she's got a dilemma and she wants to have a child. She wants to be able to bring forth this male child. So she's got a biological and theological problem. And let me tell you something. If you keep having no's enough, especially from God, you can very easily become bitter. Now listen to what I said. No's from God, not no's from people. Because no's from people really don't matter because it, what God has blessed, can't nobody curse. So God's going to take care of me. But what happens when God keeps saying no? And in verse 10, this is what the scripture says. I ain't saying it's right. This is what the text says. It says she's bitter to her soul. In fact, that's what the King James Version said. And it said in NIV, she's in anguish in her spirit. And maybe I'm not talking to anybody to assemble here. Maybe it's somebody online. Have you ever been bitter in your soul and anguish in your spirit? Now, I know some of y'all going to act like you ain't never been there. I want to tell you, your pastor has been there before. I've been there to the point where I, I was trying to get past it. I know that I'm supposed to be spiritually mature enough to get past it. I, I know that I've gone through many dangers, towards and stairs. I ought to be able to just shake it off. But it's just supposed to shake it off like a duck's back. I ain't no duck in it. The water that's on me ain't the same thing that's on you. It's hard sometimes to get past situations. And it causes you to strengthen your relationship with God. Have you ever been in such a thing that you're trying to get past it and you have to say, you know what? God, I need you even more in my life. That God lets you sit there for a momentary or for a while and you're sitting there trying to strengthen yourself saying, God, I know you're God, but how do I get past this situation? Number three, you've got to go through the process, the process of problematic people. I didn't say the purging of problematic people. You got to go through the process of problematic people. Notice what I didn't say the purging. See, it'd be easy if God take away all the bad folk. What happens when you got to live with crazy people? And when I say that, I'm not talking about folks necessarily in your house. I'm talking about those that you got to work around or those you got to have connection with and God won't move them. But most of all, he won't move you. Because that's what the, uh, uh, Hannah wanted. She didn't care about them not having their children. She didn't care about them not having their children. She said, that's something in me. And see, so that's got to be careful how you look at people and say, you ought to be happy. You ought to be thankful. You ought to be all right. Until you walk in my shoes, you don't know what I ought to be all right about. Yeah. Lord, have mercy. Number three, you got to deal with the process of, uh, of problematic people. Watch this. First of all, who's problematic is Penina. She's the baby maker. Penina is a problematic because Hannah cannot do what she can do. She is, is not just the wife of Elkanah, but she's not able to birth him what he needs to have statue in the land. So Hannah says, I'm in distress because she's my rival. But also, she has to deal with Elkanah, her husband. You got to be careful, husbands. This is for you. I'm going to give you this for free, too. I'm going to help you from out of some arguments. Verse 5 says that he loves his wife, but he says some stuff that's crazy. He said that the Bible says he loves Hannah, but watch what this crazy man says. Verse 8, he asked her, Hannah, why are you weeping? You can give birth. You know she wants to give birth. And then, you, man, you got to be careful how you ask stupid questions. Because some women, y'all ought to say, Hercules, Hercules. I know my wife home there said, talk, boy, talk to yourself. See, you got to understand something. Because sometimes, yeah, why are you crying? Yeah. 
Not that I want you to fix, but don't ask me why I'm crying, because it looks very obvious. Why aren't you eating? That's what he asked her, because when you go through anguish, sometimes you can't put nothing in because everything's empty on the inside but can't receive nothing. He says, why are you downhearted, hearted? Why are you feeling this way? But this is the thing that, he, that really messed me up, Reverend Eubanks, that got him put out of the house at least for two weeks. Watch what happened. She, he, he said, aren't I better than ten sons? No, because that won't fill the void. Because men, it ain't about you. It ain't about us. It's about what's bearing inside of her. It's not that you is doing nothing wrong because you don't have the power to fix it. You can't help her get past it. You have to pray and support her because when she's going through that valley of shadow of death, she don't need stupid questions. She needs for you to pray with her. Watch what happened. She has to deal with now, not only with Elkanah and Penina, now she's got to deal with a spiritual problem. She got to deal with Eli. Eli is the priest. He, see, she, she, she starts talking. So Hannah is so messed up, and I'll preach this better next service. Watch what happens here. Hannah is praying because she's in distress. It says she's in such anguish that when she's praying, her mouth is moving, but ain't nothing coming out. You ever been to the point where you're praying, and all you could do is utter your words but nothing would come out of you it's not that you don't love the Lord it's not that you don't know how to pray but when you get life knocked out of you and wind knocked out of you and you get your purpose knocked out of you sometimes you don't even know what to pray that's why the Bible says we know not what you pray for as we ought but the spirit making intercessions through groanings that cannot be uttered Romans 8 and 26 you get to that point where now Eli says to her you must be drunk because he does not see or hear the words coming out because he don't know the fullness of her situation, he says she must be drunk. So when he got to this point, he is looking at her on the outer and being able to assess the problems on her inner. Sometimes the things that you're trying to get past can't nobody on earth diagnose. And Lord knows you better not let nobody judge you. How many of you learned to be like Deuce and keep on walking because you don't know my story so you can't take my glory because I understand what I'm going through. Understand something. He doesn't understand he, her bitterness. Number four, you've got to be able to perceive the proliferation of prayer. Perceive the proliferation of prayer. She's down, she's in distress, she's broken, and she's bitter. Somebody say, I've been there before. She's in, this is verse 10. It says she prays a prayer and watch what she does. Proliferation means multiple adding upon. Because how many know sometimes prayer ain't like Brill Cream, a little dab, but do you? Any of y'all ever went to God and said, God, I need for you to fix the whole thing. I ain't just asking for this thing. I need for you to conjunction, junction, what's your function? Any of y'all ever felt guilty when you went to God because you didn't just have one or two things. You had 10, 11, 12, 13, 14 things. Let me tell you something. God does not limit me when I go to him. He's my daddy. I can walk with him and talk with him. Have you ever, things ever been so bad to you that nothing would come out of you but tears and anguish? And you said, Lord, I can't do this by myself and I need this to happen in my life. Watch what he, she says. It's a prolifer, proliferation of prayer. Watch what happened. She prays this prayer. Heal my affliction. Healing her affliction or her barrenness is the first thing. But then she says, remember me and don't forget me. Then she says, give me a man child. Let me tell you something. When God tells you you have not because you ask not and you ask because you ask amiss, you've got to understand that you've got to ask for what you want from God. So I heard somebody say the other day, whatever God wants for me, it's just going to be all right. I received it in Jesus' name and I'm all right. I'm sorry. God told me to ask for what I want. He said, ask for what you will. See, let me tell you something. God has given us a vehicle, and I understand that we trust God, but I'll say thine will be done, but I will ask God for what I want from him because I understand something. My prayer is proliferating. That means it is growing day by day. And understand something, there's a variety of prayers that I need God to fix. How many of y'all going through a situation right now where if he fixed just one problem, that won't do it for you? But I need a proliferation. I need a whole lot of stuff to be done to bring things in order because I don't want stuff to be just good for me. I want things to be good for everybody. This, uh, watch what happened. Hannah not only prays for herself, she's really praying also for her husband. 
She's praying for her house. She's praying for her peace. She's praying for her joy. She's praying for stability within that house and in that kingdom because she understands if it comes out of her, it not only fixes her situation, but it fixes everything around her. And how many of you going through a situation where you need stuff to be fixed around you so you can get past this? So she went and, and watch what happened. She prayed, then she went and had relations with Elkanah. Bible says faith without works is dead being alone. So she went and had relations. And when she had relations, it said that she became pregnant in her womb. That she now therefore felt like the curse had been lifted off of her. Even though it was not a curse, it was a thing that had to happen for a momentary time that she might be able to get a closer relationship with God and be a testimony of what God will bring you through. And verse 28 says, she bore Samuel and when she bore him, uh, she said, I'm going to name him Samuel because it means the Lord heard me. His name literally, Samuel means the Lord heard me. And can I tell you, uh, people of God, you may not call the thing you're going through or the thing you receive Samuel, but I want to tell you this morning, the Lord heard you. How do I know he heard you? Because he woke you up this morning and started you on your way. How do I know that he heard you? Because when you were driving to the church, you had him speak in your ear through, your, through an audible voice or through a song. How do I know that he heard you? Because when you came here this morning, you were going through this day saying, not another Mother's Day sermon, but when you heard about Elkanah and you heard about Hannah, and, and, and the preacher came out and said, how are you going to get through this? He said, God, you sent me here today because I'm trying to get through some stuff right now. And you might not have spoken to me directly, but you sent the man of God to give me a word to be able to say, everything's going to work together for your good. Now, a good preacher like these preachers would stop right there because they are theologically adept, homiletically trained to stop at the end of the text. But because I'm off the reservation and I am messed up, I messed around and didn't stop at chapter one. They're going to have to give me a correction later. I jumped into chapter two because I wanted to see what the end of the story is. Because how many know when God fixes this, it's not just for right now, but I want to be able to live in peace down the road. And I don't want to see when you know that you've gone through and God brought you out, you say, you know what? I ain't going through this no more. I went through it before and I don't plan to go through this. And watch what happens in chapter two. And Hannah prayed again. Before she was in distress, she was in anguish, but she conceived a child named Samuel. Means the Lord heard me. The, the child is dedicated back to God because she made a vow in chapter, verse 10 of chapter 1 that when you give it, I'll give him back to you. I want to tell you when God gives you anything, you better give it back to him because that's why we don't christen babies, we baptize them because when we baptize them in the name of the Father, the Son of the Holy Spirit, we are dedicating back to God which he has given unto us. Let me tell you that house, you ought to be able to give back to God. That car, you ought to be able to give back to God. That position, you ought to be able to give back to God because you forgot how you prayed before you got where you are and then you forgot to be able to give it back to God because when you don't give it back to God you will have hell in that situation until you say father I give it to you watch what happens Ver number five she had to practice post perpetual praise she had to practice post perpetual praise it says, and you can read it later, I ain't got time to go over it now, I'm already over my time. But if you read chapter 2, you will find out that Hannah prays again. Oh, it's a long prayer. That's one of them Ruby Jones prayers where you had to stomp your foot because she's going to pray till Jesus come down. Hannah had one of them long prayers. In fact, the whole, you look at the whole chapter 2, all she's doing is praying. But the difference between that prayer in chapter 1 and this prayer, she had peace in her heart. And when she prayed this prayer, she said, I'm giving it to God. And God, I'm going to praise you before I get my outcome. When you read that prayer, you'll find out that she started to praise God rather than lament in front of God. She started to give God glory rather than begrudge her situation. And she said, Father, I know you're going to work this thing out. And I'm putting it in your hands. But the key was she started praising God till she got, uh, before she got her breakthrough. And I want to talk to somebody out there that's going through a situation that you're in and you're saying, Lord, how I'm going to make it through this. Well, I want to tell you, God brought you out of some stuff last year and the year before. He brought you through something in the 70s, 80s, 90s, and even the 2000s. And you ought to learn how to give him perpetual praise. How do I give him perpetual praise? I learned
learned how to praise him through the good and the bad. I, I learned how to praise him for the happier praise cause, cause that's what praise is what I do. And is there anybody in here that can give God glory right now? Is there anybody in your living room that can give God glory right now? Anybody in your bedroom that can give glory right now when you think about the goodness of the Lord? So if those of you are going through a situation, how you're not going to make it through this, I dare you to put prayer on it. And how many know prayer will not only change people, but it will change situations. And somebody say, I'm going to get through this. Well, you ought to be shouting right now because you just made a declare, the declaration that I'm not going to stay in the situation I am and I'm going to get through this. I'm going to get through this. Everybody stand to your feet. We get ready to go. I'm going to get through this. Getting through this is not always easy. Bro, you ain't it ain't easy. Sometimes God gives us so much grace, we make it look easier than it is. Chief, sometimes it's like that. Because what you wear, you ever seen some of your neighbors say, oh, you got it going on. And you look at them and say, boy, if you only knew what was going on. Boy came to my door the other day delivering some, uh, some, some food. Young cat, young cat, couldn't be no more, 18, 19 years old. Came to my door, bro, son. Preachers came up there and handed me stuff. He said, oh, you live here? Oh, yeah. Good to see the brother doing it. I, he said, what you do? I said, I trust the Lord in all thine heart. And I lean not to my own understanding. In all my ways acknowledge him. That's what I'm really saying. And he said, bro, I got to be doing what you're doing. I said, you got to trust God. Because it was not, see, he didn't have what he's going to have. So he started to glorify what somebody else got. You got to be careful because you don't know the pain that somebody went through to have what they got. And you don't know what they're praying that they're trying to go to. Y'all ever got to a point in your life, a position, a title, or got something and say, I can't wait till I get there and everything going to be all right. And you get there and say, you know what? This won't all that. Because it was perception and reality. And you don't begrudge it. But you say, you know what? I got to get past this. And I want to tell somebody, you got anger in your heart today. You need to get past this. You, you, you're sitting there talking about what you should have, could have, would have done. What you should have, would have, could have said. What you could have, should have, would have implemented. Guess what? You didn't. So go forward. And go forward with perpetual praise because you can't allow things and people to keep you in that situation. Reverend McClain, they don't understand. Folk don't understand that because they feel like they gotta go back and fix everything. You can't go back and fix everything. Some stuff you just say, you know what? I'm going forward. I press toward the mark of the prize of the high calling in Christ Jesus. And you know what the enemy would do? The enemy will wake you up in the middle of the night saying, you know you didn't do that. You know you ain't good enough. You know you shouldn't have done that. You look stupid up there. What's wrong with you? But you've got to say, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. And you got to be like, pray, uh, like Hannah. you got to put a perpetual praise on that thing. Praise God that you survived it and that you're coming out on the other side. If you're out there and know you're not saved, you can give your life to Christ today. And we stand with you today wanting to be able to celebrate God with you. If you want to get saved today, all you have to do is say, Lord Jesus, I have spent my life up until this point sinning against you. Lord Jesus, please forgive me of my sins. I believe you are the Son of God. I believe in my heart that God raised you from the dead. Please come into my heart and make your home as Lord of my life. In Jesus' name, I pray. Amen. If you, if you prayed that prayer, we believe that Jesus received you as being redeemed and that you are saved. You are born again today. I want you to call us right now at this number, 855-979-9804. And there's somebody waiting to pray with you because you are just that important. If for some reason all the lines are filled and you have to leave a voicemail, leave us your voicemail and your number. We're going to call you right back because you are that important. Also, if you don't have a church home and you want to join this church, we'd love for you to join this church. There's room for you here, and we'll be more than glad uh, to be able to tell you how God brought us over, and he will bring you over also because he is well able, and he will help you get through this. Call us at that number. We'll get you signed up for your new members' classes and receive you into this church. God bless you, body of Christ. Happy Mother's Day to all of you. Thank God for each and every one of you. 
And I pray God will continue to bless those in the sanctuary and those who are watching us virtually. When we go out today, don't let nobody step into your Kool-Aid and change your flavor. Don't you let no waiter, no waitress, don't you let no imp, no devil, don't you let no bad phone call or responsibility mess up your day. When, when it happens, I say, when it, I, I want you to challenge you, when it happens, say, you know what, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. And said, my flavor ain't getting changed today. I'm happy in the Lord. When brother facing takes sisters facing out to dinner, or, or he already cooked for, and he messed around and, 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 and drop a piece of the, uh, the beef, the beef Wellington on the floor, do the five second rule in the name of Jesus, and say, praise the Lord, Amen. It's all right, Amen, Amen. Just don't let nothing change it. Don't let nothing mess it, cause it's gonna mess with you, because the enemy know you got a word today. And he don't want you to get past it, but you're going to make it past this situation. Now to him that is able to keep us from falling, presenting us false for us, throwing the glory with the singly great joy to our Father and our God, be glory, dominion, majesty, and power. Let the redeemed of the Lord sing together.